yeah it looks a little bit better um how's everybody doing today hopefully good um i'm kind of excited about today uh, kind of excited doesn't make a lot of sense um this has been kind of a topic that i've been trying to wrap my mind around and figure out what to do with um kind of processing a lot of it a lot of the memories i've had and a lot of the issues i've encountered over my life and applying a lot of the things that i've learned come to understand that, that david mills has helped me see and today i'm going to take a crack at um at discussing some of that um, from the way i see it currently and uh, hopefully it will help some people see some of the principles and how important they are to get what can happen if you don't get them right and uh, all that kind of thing so uh, get your screen share here what screen are we sharing yeah that looks right um all right let me grab the me we group here where did it go all right so we're handling me we're handling chat today in uh me we so there is a navigating the mind with law of implication group and the chat in there i just posted hello folks we'll get started here in a few minutes so if you guys want to comment or ask any questions as we go along uh go ahead and navigate over to that area and i'll um i'll check that as we kind of get into this and get a little deeper into the topic and what we're going to be talking about today so for people who were on last week um this was the last slide i uh i left with right that this was the last piece i talked about um we can kind of back up a little bit um yeah that was intro the uh it's kind of talking about how how we wind up how stuff winds up getting into our mind right different you know facts and so we understand the world in a certain way through our senses and different things um and then kind of one of the default methods our mind uses to to kind of know things or be certain about things is by associations and then we we talked about some of the problems that those lead to again this is all this is just a really quick recap um to bring things up to kind of where we're going to drop today so um this this navigating your mind it's really navigating your mind but but really using your mind navigating with your mind you're kind of using your mind to navigate itself in one way or of looking at it um you know when we're when we're in this kind of top area here with the landscape um we're really kind of acting and in a flow state this is a lot of these things are, are um transcribed over from a slide that david had made and so I tried to make a match up enough that we could be using some of the same language as we discuss this stuff. Uh, it's not like specialized language or anything, but it um, it does sometimes help to be, you know, when people are using the same word to have it mean the same thing as close as we can, at least. Um, and then Mindscape, we're, we're actually doing some of the planning about the actions we're gonna be taking and things like that, thinking about actions we're gonna take. And then once we get into the goalscape, we we start kind of prioritizing things. It's like, oh, I wanna be in shape and I want to have a good relationship with my partner and I want uh, a new car, new sports car. And so which one of those am I gonna be working on right now? That's kind of what we're talking about when we're talking about goals, goalscape, right? Um, and then once we, there's a gap here for a reason, because those are going to be the things that, like all of these are going to seem true and seem like the only places that we operate, right? These first kind of three, they're going to seem like, you know, there are very few times, like if you just look in general at many people's lives, I'm, I'm talking about myself, but also a lot of people I'm close enough to, they're they're living most of their life in these three areas and and there, there's not necessarily anything wrong with that unless the goals that you already have they're going to be pulling you constantly in certain directions and keeping you attenuated to looking at certain things are are not good important goals for you to have and they're loaded with failure conditions that you don't see yet and you don't really know how you got them. You just 
wind up kind of saying, you know, I'm somebody who likes to play contact sports, or I'm somebody who likes to sell, or I'm somebody who likes to be alone and read, or I'm somebody who likes to be quiet. And so there's, you know, I'm not trying to talk about personality and nature nurture necessarily, but what I'm talking about is that we, we usually don't investigate deeper than that on our own to, to really think about, well, is this the best goal for me to have at all? Right? Is there something I could replace this with that might be better off? Um, I might be better off for replacing, right? And so that's when we're talking about getting into the kind of mostly invisible mindscape, which uh, tend to be our norms, beliefs, and then wounds that we might have that, that were kind of built in our life. Again, this is kind of recap from last time, but it kind of sets the stage for um, what we're going to talk about today. I think I'm only going to cover about four slides today. So um, I think I'll probably, it'll probably be around an hour, hour and a half, and then we can have some, you know, discussion or questions um, after that if we uh, would like to. But one of the, um, th this is going to be the area, just kind of keep this in mind as we, as we move beyond this, where a lot of your ability to radically change your life is going to lie, right? Because if you can kind of get pointed in the right direction, then you can kind of start making decisions that that take you, I don't say closer, but but help you build toward getting that thing that you want, right? Um, the reason I didn't say closer is because progress and proximity are kind of terms that we need to to treat very kind of carefully a little bit because our our mind is very much set up to to make us feel good when we feel progress, and if we're measuring progress incorrectly then we've got a real problem, right? David's talked about this in some of his other series that I'm looking at kind of trying to synthesize back into what I'm talking about here. But um, right now we're gonna leave that for a, a different part. Uh, and then foundations and ultimate frames is where we're kind of talking about us being a, a, a being that that is attached to a mind in some form and understanding kind of some of the, the basic places you have to work from as far as um, individual property rights go and things like that. And I say have to, meaning th there might be something even more ultimate than that, but that, that you can kind of build to a place where if you don't have that, everything breaks down, right? And so that's kind of this foundational level that a lot of times we have a lot of things that we believe are foundational that really aren't that hold us back and keep us from doing things and achieving things that we we absolutely could do and, and it wouldn't hurt anyone. It would probably help a lot of people, including ourselves, but we don't allow ourselves to even look there because it's just, it's it, we're kind of blind to it almost, okay? Okay, so now getting into kind of the new stuff um, today. Um, what, one of the things I wanted to talk about is choices and and there's kind of a fundamental way of looking at choices, which is, do I do something different or do I try harder, right? It's kind of almost the, I, I, I don't know that there's a simpler way of looking at that, but it's like, that's the basic choice. Do I work harder or do I try something different? And as we kind of go back and forth between that that last slide we talked about, what, what we're talking about is do I stay here in the landscape and put more effort and focus and attention into it, or do I make a different plan and maybe try to put some different components together to achieve that same goal, right? Or do I completely change the goal completely and go after a different goal because this one's just doesn't seem to be happening right now. And and a lot of people spend a lot of their life really kind of just circularly going around in this. And I I, I can say that not disparaging like it, I I spent a lot of my life this way as well. Um and and what what that what this area really kind of looks like in practice is that that part of it lets you have a lot of 
discipline, right? You can just say, I am doing this. I'm not doing anything else. I'm not looking anywhere else because I'm going to put a lot of effort into this and get a lot of momentum and I'm going to get over this hump and I'm going to push through this workout at the gym or I'm going to um, continue cold calling businesses um, and, and I know my script works and I know my list is good and so I'm just going to continue doing this until I hit pay dirt, right? Versus being more flexible and looking at strategy potentially, which would would kind of take you out of that that place where you you kind of have more certainty, which is where you're you've got more men, mo, more momentum and strength. And you might say, well, you know what? I've this this is the hundredth person I've called, and none of them are saying that they even you know they're they're hanging up on me almost before I get a chance to even say who I am, right? maybe this is a bad list, right? Maybe this is a bad list of business owners. Maybe this is a bad script. If I can get into the script a little bit and understand that there's some stuff that maybe I can start working on, right? And and so we can kind of see that there are times when we need to we need to be able to do both of these things, right? There are times when you need to be able to put the blinders on and work harder. And then we also need to be able to sometimes say, okay, you know what, this isn't working. And it's not like, you know, I gave myself two weeks to make $10,000 and I didn't happen. So I'm going to go try something completely different. But we need to go back and revisit and look at some flexibility. And so that's kind of really what navigating your mind is about and understanding when to do that and understanding why and what triggers or flags would would have you do that, right? And one of the things that that comes along with these choices is that you you really need to get your goals correct as as correct as you can make them um so that you can be disciplined because if you if you don't and you're so say like the cold calling example right so say you know i'm i'm putting my head down and i'm on a call and i've called 100 people and i haven't even gotten halfway through my script and um and they all just hang up, right? Almost rudely, right? I, I would say rudely, just they're done talking to me. They're done listening to me, okay? So if we get to that place, and then we um, we also then take a step back and say, well, okay, maybe I've got a bad list or maybe I've got a bad um, uh, script that I'm working with, or maybe I'm bad at doing the script, so I need to practice that. There could be a lot of different things there, but those are all lined up with i need to call somebody on the phone to get a client right or or make a sale of some sort right whatever you're you're doing so so all of these things are are things that we can in our own power they're within our power to navigate and figure out what to do and when to do them and but the issue is well when when do i put my head down more when do i look at um, kind of rearranging my planning. When do I look at, hey, you know what? This is a goal that I shouldn't even have. I don't even know how I got this goal, but it's one that is not really serving me and it's not going to be something good. And and so we need to know how to do those different types of things, okay? Um, you know, these are just some other kind of, you know, keywords, so to speak, that uh, help us talk about and look at these things. So we might flop back and forth without really going through all of this. But it, it kind of looks like focus and distraction sometimes. Like somebody might look at someone else and be like, oh, they're so distracted, they're not getting any results. Um, and someone else can look at a different person and say they're so focused that they're missing all this great opportunity around them, right? Each of those things can be very true uh, in different situations, you know, potentially, uh, or the same situation potentially even. Um, so we've already kind of discussed and talked about the fact that we need to, at times, have enough momentum or enough power to get over thresholds, okay, right? But then also, we may put all of our power in to getting up to the top of a, you know, the kind of proverbial local peak, and the peak is not high enough 
for us to achieve the win, which means that trying harder on that local peak is not going to help us get to the, the altitude, so to speak, that we need to hit for some reason. And in that case, we need to be flexible to be able to go somewhere else. So, um, so this is this is really a this is a piece that helped me in extremely profound ways um, over the last uh, I guess three four years now. I can't remember exactly what year David talked about this. Probably 2017. Um, which is kind of <laughs> there there was a, a webinar he ran and it turned into like a, i think a series of maybe three webinars he ran where he talked about um they were they were entitled ragnarok which is uh the war that ends existence if my norse mythology recollection is um true um and the, uh, someone was asking because they, they jumped on David's webinar and they were like, is this an SEO webinar? And and so David was, you know, just answering, no, 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 this is this is part of my my training, the training that I do, which is about success and how to achieve goals. And I'm getting ready to talk about the answer to the main question in life that's never been discussed it's like the first time in history this has ever been, you know, um, kind of distilled and uncovered and discussed, right? And so it's kind of like really, <laughs> it, it was it was it was fun to listen to. I I every time I listen to that part, I I chuckle because it's it's like, oh yeah, this is just the the major question everybody has in life, which is like, how do I succeed? And I have an answer to it. I have an answer to that question that that works and it and it it covers all of it right and there can be other parts that we figure out and find out but this is the method and so it's eliminate failure conditions until you win and that's kind of you know i don't want to i'm not trying to steal david's thunder at all he discovered all of this but I, I need to talk about that here because there are some things that it'll help me there are some things it's helped me see about my life before learning about this and then also before really understanding this and those are those are two different kind of thresholds you can learn about something like you've learned about whatever i've talked about on this webinar but until you go back through and mentally really integrate it you 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 won't maybe have the level of understanding that leads to the breakthroughs that you need it's one of the reasons that that academic schoolwork is so um problematic is that that people learn a lot of things and don't understand much or what they understand is is really not related to the material at all anyway that's kind of a side note but this turns out to be like the success method right and and i won't go into the the discussion of how that all um why this all is the case right now but we can we can um let's just stipulate that it is and then we're going to see how it plays out in a couple different scenarios in my life. And these are scenarios that were fairly accurate, as I recall, right? They're, they're my memory of the life that I've lived. So um, anyway, if you have access to that, that that's, this is where it is. I think it was in um, maybe Dimensionality or a, another series. Anyway, that's uh, beside the point. I think if you have access to it, you probably know about it by now um so one of the things that i uh i didn't have in my life was a um a method of understanding what was important right of understanding impact and of really like i i had a concept of importance right like i could say it's um like my brother is more important to me than a stranger or um it's more important for me to catch the football than to try to get a touchdown after catching the football right and um, we're talking about football in a lot of these so i'm, I'm kind of trying to keep it relevant so i had the concept of importance but one of the things part of this is because i was i was young 
but my mind was developed enough to have, have at least had the the method of understanding importance in place and it it was not there right so because of kind of the norms and standards and things that i grew up with i kind of always assumed that my uh, destiny is not really the right word but like the thing that i was meant to do was to be an athlete and to um and specifically with football but really i was really good at, at basketball and and track as well but football was what kind of my dad was really good at and so that kind of got passed on to me and so that became a goal that i really wanted to um achieve to to play professionally and um so how this wound up playing out was that that first of all that that wasn't inherently bad or wrong right and and it didn't really lead to anything bad or wrong but what 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 wound up happening because i didn't have this method of eliminating failure conditions was that i missed a lot of things that i really needed to have had in place if i would have had them in place my life would have gone extremely differently okay so first one was the choice of schools so i wound up um the first couple years attending a school very close to home and and for a number of reasons even though i had uh, scholarships to like stanford and and some other very prestigious schools another one that was an engineering school that was not really that much further from my house or my home in Missouri, which is uh, University of Missouri at Rolla, which is a really top tier engineering school. And, and like the program I would have gotten into would have been engineering combined with business. It's a five year program. They were gonna redshirt all the, the freshmen so that they would finish their athletic career coincidental with graduating with these two degrees. And their average starting salaries were like $125,000 a year. For people who went through that program and so that was that was a lot of money back in 95 or whenever i, I well i guess i would have graduated in 97 or 8 right so like looking at that now i'm like well that would have been a much better decision for me to to do because it wasn't that much further away but i just was like yeah i kind of i don't like the town or like i didn't like their logo or their you know the color of their uniforms like it, it, there were just some stupid things that i placed as important that really weren't okay um and then also what went along with that is kind of the choice of majors which i didn't care about at all i just needed to keep my grades above a 2.5 which wasn't that hard, hard for me um and then it was just like well okay whatever's you know whatever i'm vibing with at the current moment and so i wound up having like probably seven declared majors um over the the you know i guess five years that that i was in undergrad playing football um and then had wound up graduating with another one after i came back to school after i left and that's kind of the end of the story but but what i can kind of see now is and and, and with this kind of method and the realizing that not not understanding importance is a major problem is that these are things i can look back on now and clearly see i should have made a different choice and i can see why and and many of us say we can do that we can look back it's like oh hindsight's 2020 no it's not really 2020 but these are obvious things that i missed and and they're things that i lacked i, I missed them because i didn't know to look for them right it wasn't like i didn't see them i, I just didn't recognize them as important and so if we don't if we don't recognize things as important we're going to assume that they're unimportant and then not pay attention to them not work on them not build with them okay um one of the other major kind of failure conditions that um 
that happened after the end of uh, my my playing um, competitive athletics, which was in like 1997. So up until that point, my entire life had been about um, being an athlete. And I, it was, I say very easy. Like I don't remember a lot of, you know, psychological, you know, challenges in operating every day, right? Going to practice, lifting weights, running, working on my speed, working on my vertical, working on my route running, um, keeping my grades up, uh, eating as much as I could. At the time, I had no concept of nutrition. It was just put as much in my body as possible and, and try to gain a little weight because I was quite thin when I was um, younger. And so it was, that was all I did. Like I literally didn't pay attention to hardly anything else. You know, I had a couple friends um, that were usually on the football team. I only had a few that were not. Uh, I didn't date girls really. I didn't uh, go out to parties. I didn't drink. I didn't, um, I think I had a PlayStation, but then it broke for a little while. <laughs> um, so I, I really wasn't doing a whole lot. So I, when my when that journey ended right when i decided i was done right and 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 i decided that um after i'd broken my leg which happened a couple days after one of my friends who was on the field with me actually got hit and died and so laying in a hospital room by yourself at night you you tend to think about things not always best but I got all stitched back up and put back together. Surgeon did a great job. And then I had no friggin' idea what to do with my life because my entire life had been about that. And so that, that was not, it wasn't like, uh, a, a lot of athletes have difficulty transitioning after they're done with whatever they're doing. Even if it's like at the high school level, and I, I get together with people I know and they talk about old, you know, high school football stories and stuff like that, you know, and it's not all bad, but you get what I'm saying. It's kind of like the transition out of the structure is, is very difficult. And, and it's a lot of, a lot of what, a lot of why that is comes from the certainty of working within a system that is looking like it's producing progress and getting you closer to the goal that you have right whether that's staying in academics and working up grade after grade or credit hour after credit hour and getting closer to graduation it seems like that's getting us closer to this goal we have the issue is if we get popped out of that system we don't have a good way of working independently the other issue is okay so say we achieve that goal is it really the goal that is going to work for us in our life and with football for me as i look at it now I don't, I, you know, I had an issue when I was done with football that I was always going to have, no matter when it was, even if I'd been a professional for a long time and earned a bunch of money and, you know, everybody thought I was great or whatever, um, which very unlikely that would have happened, right? I just wanted to play and even practice squad. It was like, I made it to the pros. That was it. That's all I wanted to do. Um, so anyway, like coming back to this, the what happened was that i i knew i didn't know what to do i was aware of that but i'd stumble into a random job right i, I wound up being um a, a park ranger in colorado that was kind of like I, I wound up with that job because i randomly picked the the major that I graduated with based on the least credit hours I was going to need to to get a bachelor's of science degree, right? I, I literally flipped a coin between that and broadcast meteorology. And it turned out Parks, Rec, and Tourism was my, um, was the winner. <laughs> so I got a degree in that, wound up getting a job as a, as a, a park ranger. And then that wound up turning into a situation where they sent me back to graduate school 
um, paid for me to go to graduate school, let me keep my job up there, and I just worked seasonally back and forth and wound up picking up another random degree because I liked maps, because everybody likes maps, right? So I got this geographic information degree. Um, that I typed up some resumes and sent them some random places. Some company calls me out of the blue, offers me a job, and within you know two years doing consulting work, um, you know there were there were several months in a row where I was I was taking home twenty five thousand dollars a month, and then I just kind of was like, well, hmm, I, okay wonder what else there is out there right and and so I, i'm not saying i should have stayed with that but it just that was the nature of like what continued cyclically happening in my life um with a bunch of different things that i did whether it was uh relationships i was in with girls or whether it was um what i was uh, trying to learn and work on professionally or jobs that i had or careers that you know and opportunities and groups that i was involved with it just kind of always kind of cyclically happened and and I can kind of understand you know I say why but there are solutions to these kinds of things but they require us to work on understanding all of these topics really I say all of them many of them cert certain ones for sure actually understanding them and getting them mentally integrated into our mind or else this is the the type of thing that can happen, you know, and I'm I'm not trying to say I'm a cautionary tale. I'm just saying that these things didn't need to happen. But you know, I'm here, so I'm going to make the most of being here and 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 working on these things that that I do know now. And even during the time that I was um, with OMG machines and things like that, I'd learned a lot of this and I understood parts of it. But specifically, this eliminate failure conditions until you win is one that I. I learned, and it and this is a very important distinction because this actually plays into a, a different thing that I I was um, didn't plan on talking about tonight, but I think I'm going to anyway, which was um, you know in 2018 or so, I was out uh, trying to fish and I, I walked upon um, what I guess was a, a, a drug deal out in public land, and some guy you know empties a clip at me. Um, shoots at me for people without the, the slang, I guess I just used. Um, shoots at me 30 rounds close enough to, I heard the wind of the bullets passing by, freaked me out completely. It was right at dawn, you know, took a bad step, fell, hit the back of my head, had a big concussion, a bunch of rocks fell down on top of me, messed up my insides pretty good, kind of crawled out, got home safely, right? I'll, I'm not trying to tell this story like in a really engrossing way because I kind of want to get to the the actual piece of this that has the point. Um, I hadn't been paying a lot of attention to my health. I really hadn't really ever in my life paid attention to my health. I paid attention to my performance. And in a weird way, I think that's really all I needed to ever do. Like when people talk about health, I'm like, what do you mean? What's health? What would what what activity do you need to perform better or at what level, right? And that's kind of my understanding of health, right? Um, so I never paid attention to health, but what happened was I was unable to do certain activities that I needed to do. One of them was sleep. I lost the ability to sleep. I I would wake up every night at 1:30, 2 in the morning. Mm, freaking out, panic attack, huge anxiety. I bought a blood pressure cuff. My blood pressure was often over 200, over 150. I thought I was having heart attacks. Um, I was constantly nervous. When I went to neurologists and, and psychiatrists and tried to um, get their perspective on things that could help me, you know, kind of heal my brain. And then there's a whole enteric nervous system, which is kind of the nervous system that, that serves your innards and your guts and all that kind of thing. And those were all damaged as well. And so there was just a whole bunch of things happening that 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 really kind of broke me in a way. Like I, I became unable to to do any of the stuff that I'm talking about here on this slot, on, on this um, this kind of talk today. Right. Um, but I knew about it. Right. It, it was kind of weird because I, I learned it and it was still in my mind. 
um, without sleeping, things just kind of got worse. I wound up getting on some prescription medication. Um, that didn't work. I wound up drinking more alcohol. And like the combination of all that just kind of like it kept me rolling on four flat tires. And that's about it. But, um, you know, things kind of finally that had gone on long enough that it wasn't like, oh, I'm just waiting for myself to heal. It's like this just isn't working. And and one of the things that was in my mind was this eliminate failure conditions until you win. And so I and and there were some really like scary, like dark times during that that couple years, really, that that certain things I had learned here were like, hey, you're not you're not your mind, you're not your body. So, you know, even though this all feels this way and you can't really see anything else, like you can kind of know that. And and it provided some solace, right? With this piece about the eliminating failure conditions, um, I was like, okay, well, I don't even know what all the failure conditions are here, but um, my life is kind of cluttered, right? I, I've got, you know, stuff laying around. I've got loose ends. Um, and then I kind of started refining that. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, if this stuff was all lying around, would it really bother me if I didn't look at it? I was like, well, if I thought about it, it would. So it's like, okay, so this, I'm, I start treating my mind a little bit. My, my engagement with my mind a little bit is like input output, right? So I'm going to try to limit my inputs, right? So I stopped eating, I drank water, I stopped looking at screens, I stopped reading books, I stopped listening to podcasts, I stopped listening to the radio. I tried not to drive around in traffic and have a bunch of lights and crazy, like yeah, all this kind of stuff. It's kind of like I took a little, you know, I was fasting like literally from a lot of different things. And and it it really provided, I'd done a lot of things up to this point. It wasn't like it was just a horrible mess and then all of a sudden I figured it out. No, I tried different diets. I tried all the different medications. It took me, it, it was like two years of pretty bad times. But but as I, I began continuing to do this, I continued to try to eliminate failure conditions. Maybe the failure condition is um, that I'm not exercising enough or that I'm exercising too much or that um, I do need this medication to help me get over this hump or that I really do need this beer to help me go to sleep. And well, you, you can all laugh at that maybe, um, but it, it got me to sleep and there were times that I, I really needed to sleep. So. So I, I kept trying to figure out like what failure conditions can I continue to remove until I succeed? And eventually I got to a place where I, I, I figured out enough about those where I could get my brain healed because I knew that the, that the really kind of underlying failure condition that I was working with that I was trying to eliminate, but I couldn't directly do it. I couldn't just go in here and, you know, it's not like I wish it was an engine. I could fix an engine, but my brain was a little different. And so I, I kind of had to use all these proxies to get my, my brain working better because my mind was still in some ways intact. And so that's there's a difference between the mind and the bot and the brain. But there was a lot in my mind that was all messed up, too. It was sending, sending me all sorts of signals. I couldn't figure out what to do with them. Right. They just made me constantly panicked. And, um, and so I was on, um, uh, benzos and, and drinking every day. Right. So that, that was like, that's all I could do to just kind of try to turn the volume down on all the signals I was getting. So this eliminate failure conditions thing turned out to get me to a place where I was able to at least begin working on letting my body heal itself, right. Creating conditions for success, eliminating failure conditions, which is, Hey, you having a brain that doesn't really work the way it needs to is a failure condition. And so now I'm kind of back onto a path where it's working well. I've, I'm integrating a lot more of the things that I've learned during the time that I've spent um, uh, with David Mills's material and, and really just going back to this, eliminating failure conditions until you win. So um, 
you know, th these are some things in my life that the that are that are kind of transformational. And the answer to them, I'm not saying it's necessarily easy, but it, it's fairly simple. If you, but it might take you a while to figure out what the failure conditions are, right? You may eliminate 50 of them. Well, if you haven't won yet, well, you just keep eliminating them, right? And so this is kind of what I'm doing now. It's kind of what I expect to be doing in 10 years. If you ask me, hey, what are you working on? I'm eliminating failure conditions, right? Until we win, right? Until I win, till we win, right? It's the big win. Like David, it's the first time I ever heard him speak. He said, the first thing he said was, I'm here to win. And it seemed like kind of a trite, like, oh yeah, rah, rah. But like, well, what does that mean? Like figuring that out. It's like, well, yeah, of course. That that should be what I, every one of us say. But we don't see it. And and so like how wrong, like how how, how bad is it that none of us even know what goals we should have? Like that's a failure condition right there. So anyway, that's kind of the nature of what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I actually don't see anything in the chat. Um, let me pull up the questions in. Um, no, no, I have a ton of people on live. Um, this will get posted and maybe some people will check it out on the replay. Um, no, I don't see any questions in GoToWebinar. Um, nothing in chat, nothing in MeWe. Okay. Oh, hey, Dave. What's up, buddy? Dave Mazaros just jumped in. Looks like it says Dave is typing. Here, I'll bring this over, um, and then we can kind of swap back and forth between this and uh, the slide deck if we if we need to or want to. I have my phone buzzing at me several times, just checking on it. I'll at least wait until the uh, little, um... oh yeah, okay. So new message posted from Dave Mazaros here. Um, something that has helped me with goals recently is having sort of a minimum or a reasoning for why, as opposed to them feeling arbitrary or whatever. Um, okay, yeah. I. Like the, the the football goal, while it seemed very natural to me, normal to me to want to be a professional athlete and, and specifically a football player, it really was arbitrary. You know, if I'd been born to a different family or in a different area of the country or in um, a place I actually wound up living later, I may have wanted to be a different type of professional athlete that wouldn't have been quite as... Um, well, taxing on the body, right? Might have given me even more opportunities. Um, a, a lot of the the goals that we have, like, hey, I've always wanted to be a whatever. That's that's kind of an arbitrary thing, like, and because it likely came from some from your environment. It didn't come from you figuring out how to how to make a a goal that that's good, true, and important for you, right? And and I know I still have a lot of arbitrary goals. Like um, one of the ones I've worked on because I've, I've been working on um, working with fasting. Um, I'm, I'm talking about food, but I'm also talking about other inputs. Right? I, I call food an input because it's an input. Right? I put it in my body. Um, and as I began to start to pull that apart, I was like, well. What do I like? When do I eat? And a lot of people eat three times a day. Completely, I say it's arbitrary. It's actually not arbitrary. It's arbitrary for us to have that goal, but it was a goal that was kind of designed by by marketers to sell more food, right? And then, well, now we got snack foods, and the introduction of snack foods were something very much commercial interest from corporations. And so we wind up having these kind of goals to, oh, I, I wanna have an afternoon snack or a bedtime snack or a, 
let's have brunch. Like there's, there are all these things that are just created. And it's like, well, what if I only ate when I was hungry? Well, that would be quite a bit different than just saying I'm going to eat because I ate, like I said, I didn't pay attention really to health. I paid attention to performance. So I, I just ate whatever I wanted to, whenever I wanted to, for whatever reason I wanted it. I walked by the counter, nacho cheese Doritos, I would crush a whole bag, right? And then I might go for a walk or a run or whatever. I wouldn't even do that. I would just be like, well, if I can still function in the way I'm doing, I'm not going to worry about it, right? Um, I wanted to see my friends, so we'd wind up having 10 beers, right? And it's like I was consu- I was putting things in my body because I wanted other things, other feelings. It was all, it was all feelings-based. And I, I began realizing even hunger is not necessarily a signal that we need to treat as um, as something we need to resolve. And, and I didn't realize that until after I, I did a fast. And I realized I was hungry for a little while, and then the hunger went away. And then I was just like clear-headed, and I had a bunch of energy. And I, I was like, well, wait, now, now I'm not spending five hours a day eating or cleaning up or procuring food or driving someplace to get food or any of these other things? Like I got more time. Like I just started realizing like there's a whole bunch of stuff in our life. And then all this kind of is in line with, you know, me talking in the description about, um, you know, like wanting more people to be aware of this. And I, you know, I don't necessarily know how to write a book. I've read some books. I, I have an okay vocabulary. Um, but more people need to know about this. And I'm like, well, how, how are more people going to know? So, well, there's a YouTube channel. A lot of people know about YouTube. So I've been looking at using YouTube, right, as a way to market some material that is something that people already value and kind of, um, it's just kind of like a thing. Right? Oh, I'm an author. I wrote a book. What's it called? It's called this. Here it is. Here's the link, right? It's like, okay, like doing that. So. So I've considered that, that there's a possibility. I won't say it's, so it's like li- eliminate failure conditions. Well, it, it's been a failure condition of mine in the past, maybe even still, that when somebody asks me about what I'm working on and I try to describe LOI, I'm not very good at that. Or even I just try to describe SEO, right? This is also something that mirrors it. A lot of people don't understand what that means. They assume that Google is like, they just know. It's like, well, no, that's not really how it works. So so these two endeavors, right, search engine optimization and uh, law of implication, are, are really actually very closely related in, in my way of seeing things at the moment, which is that a lot of people don't, are, are not really even aware of them. And so, uh, you know, I'm like, well, if I can become like one of the things that Mike Long said on a webinar oh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe now he said something like um, like writers are the mavens of our time. Right. Mavens are like um, it's kind of like one of the three types of um, personalities. Right. There's like uh, connectors, I think, and mavens. And then I can't remember what the third one is. You can look it up. Maven is like Raven with an M, but um, it's kind of the the person that sets the tone for the ideas that are important. It's it's kind of like it's like what's on the news. If you're watching the news, then what's on the news is important because you've already decided that the news was important because that's what you're doing. So it's kind of like by proxy, you've got a thing, right? Um, I snacked on liver jerky today. Right on. Not the typical type of snack, perhaps. Yeah, I um, I eat, I eat organ meat from animals, uh, mostly beef, but um, I've had fish insides as well as some uh, like game meat and things like that. I usually get try to get some liver specifically. I've never had liver jerky though. Can't I might have to look for that. Send me a link. <laughs> Make some. Get a herd of cattle. You can market this. Um, 
Okay, so I won't drag this out much longer. We're we're coming up on about an hour. Um, I'll, I'll I'll continue refining kind of this type of thing, and this this will likely be. I, I think I'll probably run another webinar in about a month, give or take, right? And probably run it on Sunday again because we probably have better attendance, right? And um, I'll probably try to go through this whole thing in a, a little more cohesive manner. Um, one of the things I needed to do was to get it out there, to kind of get it there. And now a failure condition I'm working on is like, okay, I need it to flow. I need it to have some kind of, you know, brain gasms like, oh, wow, that's good. I caught it, flows together. I'm following it, um, that kind of thing. So, so one of the failure conditions I'm working on right now is, okay, so how do I, how do I describe this in such a way, market it really in such a way where people want it and then can justify it and then I can deliver it. That's, that's what you need for a business, right? So um, anyway, thank you all for joining me. If you're watching this on replay, I uh, hope you enjoyed as well. And uh, yeah, I'm Joshua Fletcher. You can call me Fletch and I'll see you next time around. You guys take care.